The prehistoric temples of Malta are among the oldest standing structures which remain from ancient times. These massive stone temples date back to around 6,000 years ago, displaying megalithic architecture that is beautiful and inspiring, yet on a smaller scale than what we find in places like Egypt. Excellently preserved, these stone structures were covered over with soil, which helped protect them, forgotten for millennia, only recently rediscovered and carefully restored by archaeologists beginning in the 19th century. The major complexes are deservedly designated as UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Although these stone temples are large in overall extent, the interior chambers don't have enough room to hold more than a few people at a time. Therefore, public worship in large groups, as practiced in typical churches and temples today, would not have been possible. It's more likely that an elite class of priests and or priestesses carried out sacred rites inside the temple and the public was not invited in. The worship of a goddess is usually associated with female priestesses, so the question must be asked, were the temple leaders also the political rulers of the community, uh, in other words, a matriarchal society? People are still searching for answers to questions such as this, for the first inhabitants of Malta left no writing behind when they vanished as mysteriously as they had first appeared around 4000 BC. Due to the massive size, scope, and complexity of the megalithic stone temples and the extensive resources which must have been required to build and maintain them, they must have played a very important part in the ongoing life of the community, but without more real evidence though, we can only speculate and admire at this stage as very little is known about those original inhabitants that conceived of and erected these megalithic monuments. They might have crossed over by sea, possibly from Sicily, which lies about 60 miles to the north, sometime before 5000 BC. The temple builders were agriculturalists, they grew cereals, and they domesticated their livestock. They worshipped a mother goddess, which is known from early statuettes found around the Mediterranean, resembling similar statues found on Malta, several being of uniquely large size. We know from the physical evidence that the worship included ritual sacrifice, but beyond this, little else is formally understood about the type of rites that took place there. In some of the megalithic temples in Malta, men with extraordinary cranial volume were buried. It is known that until around 1985, a number of skulls found in these prehistoric Maltese temples were exposed in the Archaeological Museum of Aleta, but since a few years ago they were removed and replaced in the deposits not to be seen by the public, so only the photographs taken by the Maltese researcher Dr. Anton Misfood and his colleague Dr. Charles Savano Ventura remain to testify of the existence of the skulls at all. Since antiquity, it is well known that the serpent was associated with wisdom, healing, and also belonged to the subterranean world. On the northeast shore of Malta, there's a small village when in 1902, workmen were digging a well, literally fell into the earth. They had accidentally uncovered the outer room of a Maltese cave entrance, which was later discovered to be a complex of caves, three of which were in a series of chambers excavated out of solid rock. And this entrance is known as a type of hypogeum. And hypogeum is a Latin name for underground structure. Later, a series of underground rooms were discovered to have been located in the middle of an ancient Neolithic village and from the construction of the entrance stones, it is now assumed that at certain times, a human sacrifice was chained before the entrance. The entrance and walls and ceilings of some of the passageways and rooms have been found to be decorated with red ochre. And when first discovered, the three caves were crammed with as many as 30,000 skeletons 
of men, women, and children. Once past the entrance, a narrow passageway leads ever downward to a long underground tunnel and a series of caves which are reputed to allow one to traverse the entire length of the island and even further. So legend has it that these passageways at one time connected with underground tunnels that go deep into the earth but have allegedly been sealed off to the public ever since a school teacher took 30 students into the cave and disappeared, guide and all. Now, I'm always suspicious of legends and wanted to see if I could validate whether this was true or not, or just a gimmick to impress tourists. So what I found was a 1940 edition of National Geographic magazine that featured a story on Malta, and I'll go ahead and read the relevant part to you. And I quote, Many subterranean passageways, including ancient catacombs, now are part of the island's fortifications and defense system. Supplies are kept in many tunnels, others are bomb shelters. Beneath Valletta, some of the underground areas served as homes for the poor. Prehistoric men built temples and chambers in these vaults. In a pit beside one sacrificial altar lie thousands of human skeletons. Years ago, one could walk underground from one end of Malta to the other. The government closed the entrances to these tunnels after school children and their teachers became lost in the labyrinth while on a study tour and never returned. End of quote. So there you have it. Where there's smoke, there's often fire. But what happened to them and what the entire story is remains a mystery. Thank you for listening. My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an anthropologist. Please subscribe if you enjoy my presentations. I cover many topics. To my subscribers, as always, thank you for sharing, liking, commenting. And for those who like to read, please have a look at my book selection on Amazon.com. Thank you. See you next time.